Okay, brother, you come on up here. Okay. Wilbur, what's it going to be? What are we going to do? We're going to talk about heaven. I mean, paradise. Which one is it now? Well, it's the one that the Jehovah's Witnesses have sort of made up, but they haven't done a very good job. Hey. Amen, amen. They haven't done a good job. Yeah. God bless you. Bless you while you're bringing that to us. Okay, we have a handout there uh, of what I'm going to speak no, to. No, we don't have a handout. Huh? We what is it? We don't have a handout. What we have it? a take in. Take in, okay. All right, we have take in, and I think there's enough for everybody out there. Uh, it's on. And while she's passing them out, I'll just say a few words for those and on the video and different things there, there, that my name is Wilbur Lingle. I'm with Love to Share Ministries, which I created myself. And uh, if you are interested in witnessing to Jehovah's Witnesses, you can go to my website, lovetoshareministries.com, and there's a lot of material there, Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, and Muslims, and you'll find. And all this material that I'm gonna be using today, if you go onto my website, <clears throat> And you go there under the Jehovah Witnesses and then go under the notes that I use when I have a seminar in the Jehovah Witnesses. All this material will be there about the new earth. So I trust you will look on that. And then I'll do my advertising. Uh, Approaching Jehovah Witnesses in Love. This is a book that's in its fourth edition. And it'll really give you, help you if you want to witness to Jehovah Witnesses and give you a lot of information. And here's one, 20 important questions, Jehovah Witnesses. If you have this around when Jehovah Witnesses come, you can give it to them and say, I have this booklet, would you read it and tell me whether it's true or false? They'll say, is it written by uh, what's called apostate? I was never a Jehovah Witness, so I'm not an apostate on the work. And then this is a book, What the Watchtower Society Doesn't Want You to Know. This is the inner workings of the Watchtower Society and tells you about them. And there's a lot of Jehovah Witnesses on the fringe. And this has been used. We've got out. We've had them saved and things. I just had a man in Australia read it, a lady in Oregon, and uh, different ones have read this. And it's a good book. And actually, when Jehovah Witnesses come, you can study with them. Say, I got this book. Can we study it together? Well, I'm not an apostate, so uh, you can get them to study with it. And then I have my book, Approaching Mormons in Love, How to Witness Effective Without Arguing. And as I said, there are 75,000 Mormon missionaries out at all times. I hardly ever hear of any of them be saved, okay? but 85% of the converse of Mormonism comes from evangelical churches. What a shame we have. And not, not, not. All you have to do is call up an 800 number and you can have them come. And why we're not taking advantage of this mission field, I don't know. And then I have one, uh, 25 important questions for Mormons. This is one that you can have around. Um, and this is my latest one. I have this book on Islam reprinted. And, and uh, this is a real bargain. The book is priced for $23.99, but I got a very special deal. You can get it for $9.95. So everybody should read this book and read this and be able to witness and understand these uh, Muslims as they're around in the area. Now, I think we're going to have some things put up on the screen. I'm not going to read everything because you can read uh, yourself. We talked about the ones here that knew about the false prophecies and different things, and if you know all those, that's a fine way. But I'm talking today mainly for the people who don't know very much about the Watchtower Society and you want to be a witness. I said, okay, here it is, Saturday morning. You're rushing around, time to decide what you're going to do on your day off. You pass the living room window, and you stop dead in your tracks, and you say, oh, no, here comes those show witnesses. What are you going to do? Well, some pretend they're not at home. Uh, some invite them in their home and start with John 1.1, 1, 1, which is the first place you should ever, ever start with them because they're not sinners and they don't need a savior and the things like that and different ones. But if you do talk to them, they will probably say, we live in a world of sin, ricks, and corrupts, and crime. Wouldn't you like to live in a beautiful paradise on earth? And I don't know whether you can see that, but they might give you a tract like that. If you don't like that one, They'll give you something like this, this thing. Don't like that? They'll give you something like this, and they'll give you. Okay, beautiful pictures, right? Okay, but there's a little hat. So I listen to them, and I say, 
You know, that sounds very good, but you know, you just said we live in a world of sin, corrupts, and crime. How do you get from where we are now over to this? I said, is there just some pixie dust and all of a sudden, you know, we just all of a sudden jump over here? And uh, they say, well, no, it's not like that. And they said, do you hear about Armageddon? Yeah, I think I've heard about Armageddon. Well, what happens at Armageddon? Well, here's a few things that they say, okay, if you can see it. It's going to happen at Armageddon. This is an awful one. When I was in Japan in 1975, they had this on one of their magazines. And of course, we had the atomic bomb in Japan, and, and it's an awful one. Uh, look at this one. I don't know whether you can see it or not. Get an idea. Okay. And uh, something like this here. Okay. So before this beautiful earth comes, you have Armageddon. And uh, so what happens at Armageddon? And so it's very legitimate that you ask questions about uh, the new earth, and you have a very good opportunity to ask them. And uh, I found that Jehovah's Witnesses are not prepared to talk about the new earth. I have never found one Jehovah's Witness that knows how to answer. In fact, I'm in correspondence now with one who's a very, supposed to be learned, and he had to write to the Watchtower Society to get some answers. And I don't think he's going to get some answers uh, there on the thing. So you can start and you use some questions here. Okay, here's question number one. In what way are the Armageddon survivors going to bury the dead after they watch the worms and birds eat them up? Flesh. All right. They believe that at Armageddon, everyone who is not a Jehovah Witness uh, is going to be destroyed. Now, they might say, we don't know, but there's only a very few. So there means that there's going to be 7 million dead people around. All right. I was a missionary in Japan. We had some different customs. We didn't have a undertakers come and take care of them. At first, when they brought them in to us, we had a pastor who had to take care of them, and I put body, dead bodies into caskets. And a, cask, a body will begin to decay within 24 hours. And we had three of them, and we had to keep them for three days, so you have to learn how to put dry ice certain places in a dead body, and you have to change it every day. And I don't advise you to do it, because it's not the So therefore, our, there are between seven and eight million Jehovah Witnesses. All right? So now we have what's called seven billion dead bodies around. That's everything. So what do you do? Okay? And then you have to, what's called, they have to bury them. Now, their books say they have to spend seven prophetic months burying bodies. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't like skeletons. So you just ask them the questions. I say to them, well, you know, seven billion dead bodies, that's a lot to bury if you build a six-foot grave for each one. So I said, do you bury them each one by themselves? Or I say, do you get a common grave and start and drag them all over here to this one grave and put them in? How do you bury them? Well, they don't know, but I'm making them think, okay? They think, and it's not going to be a very nice thing, uh, uh, what they do. So they have to bury the dead bodies is what they do, all right? In Japan, we used to wear masks when the people had colds and different things like that, okay? If you do some thinking, if a dead body begins to putrefy within 24 hours and you've got 7 billion bodies around, there's going to be a lot of bad air, right? So you say, you know, I think you would need some masks. Are you buying up any masks? Well, of course not, right? Hey, they're not buying any masks. So I'm just making them, trying them to get them to think. All right, now you've seen these pictures and what they say Every vintage of this old society is going to be gotten rid of. Some of you people know what New York is like, right? All right? If all the buildings, all the houses, all the factories, row houses, everything, all those were destroyed, how would you get rid of the debris? Huh? I mean, that's a tremendous thing. And you don't put it up in heaps. All this debris 
has to be buried down under earth so that you can't see it because the whole world has to be used after that. So you ask him what happens to the debris whenever Armageddon comes. And that's a tremendous picture and things like that. And by the way, you can use these pictures here. Uh, you don't see any buildings in there. You don't see any buildings at all, so they're all taken away. And by the way, I've used this material, and uh, it works on it. All right, most people do not do manual work. So if you're going to do manual work and start getting rid of this debris, you're going to have some sore hands. So I say to them, I say, are you buying up work gloves? I mean, you're not going to be able to find everything's going to be destroyed. You should start buying work gloves pretty fast is what they need to do, making them think. Well, they're not buying work gloves. Well, I mean, I do a lot of work, but if I do something, I'm going to get a blister pretty fast. So you're going to have a lot of problem with the do. Uh, I thought about this new earth and the next one, and uh, the only, I said, how are you going to get rid of this debris? And the only way I could think of was by wheelbarrow and shovel. And do you know what? I found a Watchtower magazine with a wheelbarrow and shovel. Okay, so they have a wheelbarrow and shovel is what they do. So I say, are you buying up wheelbarrows and shovels? I mean, I think if they really believed, they would have warehouses filled with wheelbarrows and shovels, wouldn't they? I, don't think, I mean, they think that's logical, but I'm trying to get them to uh, think. Okay, so think of all this rubbish. How are you going to solve the problem? I don't know where you know, when those trade buildings went down, it took them one year here to haul all of the debris away in trouble. And I'll tell you, I have a friend that has dogs, sniffing dogs, and they took them out there, and because a lot of people died, I'll tell you, it was a very poor thing to do. And uh, because they had all these people who were dying. So ask them, how are you going to solve this problem? Now, if they say Jehovah's going to help us, no. Jehovah would have never got rid of rubble. I just read Nehemiah. When Nehemiah went around the wall, remember he had to stop because of rubble? And all the people had to clean it up. So that's not a very good excuse. So you say, how are you going to? And let them think. Don't go fast. Let them think and make them uh, solve these uh, different things. All right. Now. If you've ever gone down the highway and you've seen them working on a super highway for five miles and you see them digging up the cement, have you ever seen those piles of cement along the side? Yeah, oh, thanks, please, thanks, thanks. Okay, on the thing. Okay, if you notice these pictures here, and I brought them up, you never see a road or you never see a paved road. So the only logical conclusion is that you have to get rid of all these roads. Now, how are you going to get rid of these roads by hand? Huh? Thing. And then what are you going to do with all this debris, all this big thing? Uh, on the way up, we come up to the turnpike extension, there was a bunch of debris over there. I mean, it's impossible. They're promising you something, but it's impossible for them to ever practice to get rid of them. I had one Jehovah Witness, and I was talking to him, and uh, he said, well, I've seen places that big. And he was in Germany. He said, but I admit I had was standing on a paved road. <laughs> and uh, so what I'm trying to do is to get them to think subconsciously. You see what I mean? And after I ask these questions, the next time they read them, they're going to see things. You see what I mean? And they won't look. I mean, you don't even see a road that on a paved road. So therefore, all these roads have to be gotten rid of. All right? You don't see any railroad tracks there and on the things. Okay. What are they going to do with all the railroad tracks? And what are they going to do with all these railroad engines and all these railroad cars? They're not needed. And it says every vintage of this old society is going to be gotten rid of. And uh, they have to get rid of it somehow, work. 
back up a little bit. One man, when I asked him about the cars, he said, well, we're going to cut them up and make them uh, what's called farm instruments out of them. Well, you need acetylene torches to cut them up and different things, and they're not going to have them, so they're not going to have out there the debris. And uh, these are practical questions. All right. The next time they see a, a rail, a train, comes to mind. When they see a car, it comes to mind and the things like that on the, uh, the thing. And then we have 75 million cars and trucks on the road. Has any of you ever seen a beautiful junkyard? What did it have? It have a big wall up, right? They have a wall up so you can't see in it and think. Junkyards. So what are you going to do with 75 million cars and trucks? OK? The next time they see their car, they're going to be doing some thinking. They're going to wonder what happened uh, to them. Now, in case you don't know it, the Watchtower teaches that just about everybody who has ever lived on this earth, earth, is going to be resurrected and given a second chance. And you should remember, Jesus died only for the, for the sins that you inherit in Adam. You have to die for your own sins. So since Jesus died for the sins we inherit in Adam, then almost everybody's going to be given a second chance on the new earth. They estimate that between 20 and 22 billion people are going to be raised. Are you with me? Now, there are only between 7 and 8 million Jehovah Witnesses who are going to survive Armageddon. All right, they're going to be standing down, okay? So these people have to prepare things before they come. Now, before any of these billions of people can be raised, the Jehovah Witnesses have to get rid of all this debris, Okay, they have to build a house, they have to plant a garden, each one has to have an acre, they have to have vegetables planted, they have to have an orchard, so that when these people are resurrected, they can live independently. Now, and you see houses, and you see western houses, okay, but where are you going to get the lumber from? I don't know whether you realize, we don't have lumber anymore on the east coast. We have to some and there's no roads. So where's the number going to come from, and how are you going to make up for all these things? Their own books say it might take 100 years to clean up the debris before they can start building. Now, that, that doesn't sound very nice to me. I mean, I've torn a few houses down, and I'll tell you, it's not fun. And, and, the thing, and all this type of work and thing they're going to do. So they have all these billions of people that are going to run. And don't go too fast. Let them have time to think about what you are talking to when you have them there. <clears throat> and uh, everybody's going to be farmers. Well, are there any farmers here? OK. Farming isn't interesting. I mean, it isn't easy. I remember when I was a kid, my grandparents had a farm, and they used to plant wheat in the fall. And I said, that's the stupidest thing you do. Why don't you wait till the spring? Why are you planting in the fall? You know what I mean? Why do? I learned that snow is one of the best fertilizers you could possibly get. And in Japan, we have rice, and those people who live in the places where they have snow have better rice. And those people won't eat the other rice. No, there's a lot of art. And when do you farm? How do you farm? I mean, that's a lot of things to be. OK. Uh, everybody's going to be a farmer during, after they build all these houses there, everybody's going to be a farmer. Well, you don't have many farmers. I don't know what percent. It used to be maybe 5% is all. So who's going to teach all these people how to become farmers? Hmm? That's a good question, and what they have to do. Uh, and then if you see some pictures, uh, some of them, they'll show you houses like we have here in America. They will show you houses with trusses. You know what trusses are on top of the houses, those big things in the trusses? Are not okay. okay. Now, remember, there's no mechanized equipment. So how are you going to put those trusses up without any mechanized equipment. 
If any of you remember seeing presses and the quick pictures, you see the presses and the things like that, there's no way to do it. You see I mean? But the thing is, if there's no mechanized equipment, there's no electricity, there's no power, where are you going to get these sawmills to cut this lumber? Huh? Where are you going to get all these things? And I don't know whether you know it or not, but power's tools get dull. Now, they're not going to have them, but even if you have a handsaw, I have I don't know how many handsaws are dull, and nowadays you can't even get them sharpened and things like that. So how in the world are they ever going to have houses and ever they going to have houses that, uh, like we're building today? I was talking to one Jehovah Witness, and I was explaining to this about him and the things, and he said, well, uh, now, those people in Africa that are still pretty primitive, that use the grass roofs and the natural things and everything like that, he said, they're okay, but he says, we're going to have to do some downsizing. That was a Jehovah's Witness that said himself, you see what I mean? So uh, what they're promised you isn't a very good uh, promise that they have uh, going on. And uh, then what they teach is that what we know about salvation, Jesus Christ and salvation, that's all gone. They say in Revelation uh, uh, 20, verse 12, when it talks about the day of judgment, the scrolls will be open. And what is written on those scrolls are going to be the rules that they lived by during the millennium. Okay, now, I'll explain a little bit. There is a mammoth amount of material on those scrolls. All right? Now, I hate to do this in the afternoon, but do some thinking. Okay, there's a mammoth, hundreds and hundreds of pages apparently seem to be on these. I'll explain a little bit later. Okay, they have not been revealed. And remember, we said everything's going to be destroyed. There's no, no printing presses. Okay? And if you only have seven and eight million people oh, around the world, they're not going to be much content. So how in the world, and you can ask them, how in the world are the Jehovah Witnesses going to learn uh, what is on these scrolls? It's rather me. And so this is a very good thing. Now, this is very important because besides getting rid of the dead bodies, besides getting rid of the debris, okay, eh, besides building the houses, uh, besides being farmers for themselves and things like that, that all of these resurrected people have to be taught what is on these scrolls. Now, are you ready for this? It takes between 100 and 500 years to teach what's on these scrolls. Now, if you're thinking, how, how did the Jehovah Witness learn all this material before? You see, it, it took a lot of time that they have to do. And, uh, so they have to, to be taught this thing. All right, now, if any of you have had any contact with Joe Witten, they'll say, during the millennium, there's no death. That is false. Because what happens is, is when the people are resurrected, they are resurrected in the same condition that they died. Okay? And we all know we're sinners when we die. Okay? Okay. okay. Also, the physical condition that the Jehovah's Witnesses go on to New Earth, that is the condition that they're in. They don't become what's called perfect overnight. It is a gradual process. As, as, and this is the same thing. These people that are resurrected become gradual process. Now, we're not going to have a perfect condition, are we? Okay. Now, because these people are given between... Uh, uh, 100 and 500 years to respond. If they do not respond, then they are annihilated. Isn't annihilation death? Huh? If they're not. Okay. And what do you have again? Dead bodies. I sort of joking, and they say, I said, you know, I've got my house built, and I've got my yard put out, and things like that. And here comes a person walking across the, my yard, and uh, God decides to zap them because they're not things, so they go dead. I say, 
you know, my neighbor's going to not going to come up and say, hey, Lingo, you know, you've buried five. I've only buried four. Let me buy a bird this one. You see what I mean? So here you have your beautiful, nice yard, supposedly, and you've got all these grays out in front of them. Now, these are very practical questions, right? If they're promising you this beautiful earth, then these are very practical questions that you can ask for them on the, uh, as we go along. Um, uh, now, as we said here, number 15, uh, the sinners, if they don't respond, so we're going to have death. They make a lot of promises that they do not fulfill, and they cannot be on the uh, way that they have. All right, the next one. How are we going to enjoy all these picnics like they show in the Watchtower Tracks and Dover Witnesses handout? I mean, you see them all, they have a big picnic, and you have all different things running around. And by the way, you see people from all nations in their own uniform, the dress that they have. Well, how are you going to mix up these people? I mean, they don't think. So you're not going to have time for all these nice picnics, and you're going to have all these wonderful things and everything. And you see them found nice baskets. Where are they going to get the baskets? Where are they going to get all of these things that you see them uh, have? Now, the Watchtower Society teaches that during the millennium, those resurrected will be gradual. Because, like I said, you have to build houses, you have to have gardens prepared, you have to have everything. So you can't raise them all up at one time. So this has to be a gradual process that we do, which will take hundreds of years. Now, those of you who know your Bible know that there's only two resurrections, right? There's one before the resurrection, there is one after the resurrection, and never before. The only answer I got this is one place, I think it's in Jeremiah, it talks about the waters being up to the ankles, and then up to the knees, and up to the waist, and then up to here, and they tried to use that for a gradual resurrection. Well, I don't think that that's very much. And this is an important question. Okay, take your Bible in hand. Where do you see a gradual resurrection? There's no gradual resurrection, right? It says, and the Bible says, they were not raised until the second resurrection, until after the thousand years. Huh? So they're not responding. By the way, I don't know whether most of you know, up until 1935, the Jehovah Witnesses, everybody was going to go to heaven in bodies. The anointed would be the bride of Christ, the other people would be the guests of Christ. And the thousand-year reign was for the Jewish people. Charles Russell was very, what's called Zionistic and thing. So all of this was created by Joseph Russell after 1935. Well, he didn't do a very good job of thinking of all the details. There's many details he's thinking of and things. And by the way, this is all that you have as a Jehovah's Witness. What do you have in this life? You have to sacrifice. Everything is sacrificing for the Watchtower Society. You have, so all they have is look forward to. And if you can destroy, be in plight, what they have in the future, you see what you are uh, doing. Uh, yeah. And then we said here, if they do not respond, uh, they are annihilated and they put out of uh, business. All right, let's go down here to number 18. Are we, excuse me, I get the next time. Oh, crap. No. Uh, will there be sin during the millennium? Yes. Yes. At the beginning, as I said, at the beginning of the millennium, conditions, your heart, and everything is the same they are now. And by the way, it is very, very difficult for the Jehovah Witness to accept whenever Jesus said, ye are of your father the devil. I'm helping a lady in San Diego work on it, and uh, there's a man that he, he is not gonna accept that he's a child of the devil, you see what I mean? He, he's not gonna accept that he's a, uh, a slave to sin, and they don't want to have that. Uh, uh, so there is going to be sin in their own books as a gradual process. 
So this is not going to be a quite a very good place where they uh, have. Uh, okay, so you ask them, how is this new earth going to be promised? I mean, you tell me about this new earth, but I want to know about the details. Oh, and I think they're important, right? If I'm going to have to do, especially when you have the words of Jesus, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you under myself to where I am. I don't think there's much comparison, is there? Is between what they have on the uh, uh, whole thing. Now, this is a very important. On what they teach that at Armageddon, Satan is annihilated. Satan never receives any conscious punishment. Okay, now these Jehovah's Witnesses have worked very hard for a thousand years, we're just playing. Okay, they've got to get rid of all this rubble. They've got to teach all these people. They've got to do all these things and everything. And maybe at the end of a thousand years, they've got it where they wanted. What happens is Satan is going to be recreated. He's going to be able to go out and test the people, which is known as the final test. No Jehovah Witness has the assurance that he or she will pass the final test. My friend, if you never had a burden before, why is it? Isn't this a shame? The Jehovah Witness come to the door, we're slamming the door in their faces. We're being rude to these people that have no hope. Absolutely nothing, and we're rude, and we're lazy. The Jehovah Witnesses spend 30 minutes every week learning how to witness, and I don't think if we have 1% of Christians who know how to witness Jehovah's Witnesses, we're lucky. And I have seminars, and people want to know the minimum amount of knowledge in the minimum amount of time. Well, I can't help the McGregor's who know that, too. You, you're, going to have, you're going to have to spend some time, but we're lazy, and I can, I'm convinced if the church would ever get mobilized, we could really have an impact upon the cults, but they don't. What happened when these people go out on Saturday? If they went to five homes where people just gave their testimony in a loving way, man, what happened? You see what I mean? I had a ministry in Trenton, New Jersey. I had put a three-minute message on the answer machine advertising the paper. There's a thousand Jehovah's Witnesses there, and there was a great big conspiracy against them. You know? That's what they uh, do. Uh, so this, how will they become physically perfect? It's a gradual process. So all that they promise you isn't going to come uh, in a hurry. Uh, and then here's a good question. Who are those who will be raised to life on the new earth? earth? And uh, they have a picture. I forgot to bring the Bible. What does the Bible teach on page 75? There's a picture there, besides some nice park and things like that. There's a family. There's a father and a mother and a daughter. And there's a child that seems to be resurrected. And he seems to be about 11 years old. And then in the back of the background, there's an older man. And I don't know what to say older is. is and there's a, like a father who is being resurrected, which would be old. Now, if you figure it out, if we're going to be raised at the age we died, how, the, the new world's going to have all the old people. It's not going to be all these beautiful young people in the thing, because there's a few children that died, but they're not going to be, that's going to be the lesser thing. And so they're going to have it, and... Uh, on the new earth. So who's going to be raised? And if you follow the picture, and you take that picture and you use it to a Jehovah's Witness and say, point it out to them, it's pretty effective what they do on the, uh, what they have to do. And then they say that you can live as families. Now, just think. You people have children. If you have children, they're scattered all over the place, right? They're scattered all over the place in different places. Years ago, we lived in small towns and everything like that. So they lived all over the place. They're all the different things. Okay, remember, there's no roads. There's no trains. There's no airplanes. There's no transportation. Everything you have to do will walk. So how can families live together? 
And by the way, do you live with your, for the girls, do they live with their husband's family or with their family? Now, I'm, what I'm saying, I used, used this with the Jehovah's Witnesses, and they have these things, and ask them questions about how they're, they're going to live. These are all practical purposes that you can ask them what they're going to do. And then uh, ask them again, we talk, do you know anything about working about on a farm? Well, you're going to have a little bit of a problem with the farmers and the things like that. As, um, maybe mummies don't go out, but we have Victory Gardens. Anybody remember Victory Gardens? During the Second World War, we used to have a little Victory Garden where people were, and we had a Victory Garden and the things like that. And, but are you getting the problem that they have here and on the thing? And so there it is on the same thing. This is a question. You've seen this rather complicated, right? These beautiful pictures that they're showing you, you know, are not so beautiful and not so nice. It's very complicated to think. So I think if you were logical, the Watchtower Society be, should be putting a survival manual printing out. Wouldn't that be logical? I mean, just tell them. And I've used this. I've used this. I said, why don't you present yourself? Tell them how to build. Most people, you know, building a house is not simple. I've done carpenter work, but you've got to know what you're doing to do that, you see what I mean? Planting a garden is one thing, and like that. And by the way, these houses, if there is not going to be any life, because it's a pollution-free society, so there's not going to be any electricity, there's not going to be any gas. Now, if we took your gas and electricity out of your house, what kind of a house would you have? Hmm? That would be pretty bad, wouldn't it? But that's the kind of house they're going to have. And uh, like this and the thing. And uh, uh, ask them. And survival man. Are you with me? Be practical to make these people think. I had one Jehovah Witness. I spent, and I'll spend a lot of time with them. And uh, asking these questions. And he bowed his head. And he said, uh, uh, well, um, uh, you see, uh, uh, these, these pictures come after maybe seven or eight hundred years. It takes the whole thunder out of them. You see what I mean? I don't know about you, but I'm a little tired. That's a lot of work, Eric. And if you come along and be to it, Jesus, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I come again, I'll receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. Jesus says, there is not one word in the whole what's called Watchtower material that God's going to do it in a special way. I know you talk about Jehovah's Witnesses. They'll say, uh, Jehovah's going to help us, but it doesn't say anything like that is on the thing. And so I trust that this be a help to you. And use these questions and go on. And like I said, I have a man that's well-trained. And I've never met a Jehovah's Witness that even begins to understand it. And by the way, one of the things you do when the Jehovah's Witness comes, you say, that's all well and good, but I'm a very inquisitive person, which I am. And I say, it would take, I have a lot of questions, it would take time. Are you willing to come back? They say, yes. And I said, well, I want you to really understand I have a lot of questions that take time. That's okay. I say, okay, how long can you come back? We can come back as long as you want us to. You see? And the thing is, like I said, you need time to build a relationship and to make them think. But these are simple things to use. And like I have, I haven't had one single uh, Jehovah Witness be able to answer me. And I think, you know, I think the Jehovah Witnesses should stu study how the Indians used to live, right? Wouldn't that be a smart thing to do? You know? And things like that, and uh, some of these different things. So I trust that these might be helpful. And again, I say go to my website, uh, lovetosharministries.com, and under my notes on uh, when I have a seminar, they're all there, and you can use them. And uh, I have my books over here and come there, and also I have a website. And if any of you ever have needs to anything, just come back to me. I have a huge file a lot of material. If you ever want any proof about anything, I can give it to you. Thank you very much. You listen very well. Shall we close in prayer? 
Father, we don't understand why you have brought us into the truth in Jesus Christ, but we thank thee we have. But Father, it's something that we don't want to keep to ourselves, but we want to share. And we're thinking of these Jehovah Witnesses, the heavy burden of sin that they wear, plus the burden of the Watchtower Society puts upon them. And these people are coming and knocking at our doors. And Father, we pray that we might take advantage of these things, that we might see many more of them come to know Christ as their own personal Savior. And we'll praise you if we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much.